Hello and welcome to this MLC PCH revision video. In this short video I'll explain how to interpret cardiac catheterization data. So data from cardiac catheterization is commonly seen in the applied knowledge and practice exam. These questions are relatively straightforward if you work through the data you're given systematically and I find the best way of doing this is to draw a diagram similar to this one. Now I know it isn't exactly anatomically correct but it does allow you to go through each side uh, of the circulation in turn to work out where a problem might be. So let's have a look at normal values first. So on the right side you can see the saturation of the blood should remain constant at each step of the circulation. So on the right side that would be 75%. The pressure should increase between the atrium and the ventricles but the pressure between the ventricle and the vessel should remain constant. So as you can see, the systolic pressure in the right ventricle is 25, as it is in the pulmonary artery. A similar situation is true for the left side. So saturation should be higher after oxygenation, and indeed they are at 98% throughout the left side of the circuit. And again, similar to the right side, the pressure increases from the atria to the ventricles, um, and the pressure from the ventricle is transmitted into the aorta. You don't have to remember these specific numbers, uh, but if you just have a rough idea of what they should be, uh, you'll then be able to interpret any data that you're given. So in order to interpret uh, data questions like this, there are about four rules to follow. So the first involves saturation. So a sudden step up or step down in the expected saturation indicates that there's a shunt at some point. The level of the shunt can be determined by locating where the step up or step down occurs. In this example, the step down occurs in the left ventricle and that implies a communication between the left and right ventricle. The second rule involves unexpectedly high pressure in a chamber. So in this case, uh, the right ventricular pressure is a lot higher than you'd expect from normal. So that can imply one of three things. The first is that there is stenosis in the vessel following that chamber. The second is that there is a shunt from an adjacent chamber in the direction of the increased pressure like this. And the third possibility is that there's back pressure from earlier in the circuit. The third rule states that if there is a sudden drop in pressure in a vessel as compared to the previous chamber, then that implies that there is stenosis in that vessel. Finally, the fourth rule is about unexpectedly equal pressures either between chambers or between vessels. So if the pressures have equalised, that implies that there is a communication between the two sides. So in this first example, uh, the ventricular pressures are equal, so that would imply a large septal defect. If the pressures were equal in two adjacent vessels, and that implies that there's some form of communication, um, for example, in this case, a truncus arteriosus. So by following each of these four rules, you can work out what kind of pathology is implied by the cardiac catheterization data. On the website, we've posted a workbook with some examples for you to practice. Thank you very much.